On today's episode of Fiddle Culture, I asked my viewers to send me videos sharing their experience of what it's like growing up in the Caribbean. Hope you enjoy. What's up guys? Your girl Bella here, representing for Carries Maggie TV. Remember, do road and do things. Anyways, here just telling you about growing up Caribbean. So this is the yard that I grew up in. That little house and it taught me humble beginnings it taught me how to appreciate what you have and to make the best of all you have and so i'm just here drinking a little cold malta you know enjoying the time that obviously this beautiful place is allowing me to have and just remembering that life is short and you need to live it and enjoy it to the best way possible. Growing up Caribbean has meant so many different things to me, especially because I have a Trinidadian father, a Vincentian mother, a Tobagonian grandmother, and my grandfather on my father's side is of Venezuelan descent. So I've learned to deal with a lot of cultures and how to ask for a lot of things because of these different cultures. But I would have to say I won't change anything about growing up in the Caribbean or growing up in Trinidad specifically and to be honest one of the perks is that we get to travel a lot even though it's a bit expensive sometimes the opportunities that I get to travel and visit my family on the different islands is great and I wouldn't trade it for anything hey Karis Maggie Jalen here um one thing I would change about growing up Caribbean if I could it would be that of maybe numbing down the glamour and glory that surrounded a life inside the US. I think that not only made it hard for me to appreciate my country but it also added to the fact of me feeling that I wouldn't be able to grow up successful unless I moved away and started a life over there and did school and have a career. But I've noticed that recently a lot of Caribbean people they're more unified. For example you can't have a conversation about fry jacks and say it's not good because bullies and will come for you or talk to Trinidadians about doubles being nasty because that's going to start a riot so I think that's really cool and I'm not too sure if that's even a problem still in today's world but if I could go back in time to change something about me growing up Caribbean that definitely would be it but other than that we're the best growing up Caribbean best thing in the world and I wouldn't want it otherwise especially for the fact that I have been exposed to so many different cultures within the Caribbean. I've grown up in three different countries, Jamaica, Haiti, and Trinidad. Growing up Caribbean, um, was not that bad. It was pretty good because you have some experiences that molded you into the person you are today. I remember when I was growing up, I was going to Froome Technical High School and I used to go to this river after school with some of my friends and for some reason somebody would always see me <laughs> and tell my mother. So I remember the first time I went home she asked me, yo, where have you been? I was like, yo, I was at school. She said, so how did somebody tell me that they saw you at the river? I was like, oh yeah, I went to the river after school. She's like, okay, don't let it happen again because I didn't send you to school to go to the river. I said, okay. But me, me, <laughs> being the person I was, I decided that I was still going to go because, you know, I went a couple more times, I didn't get caught. And then I don't know where somebody saw me one more time, told my mother and, you know, I went home. She saw me, she's like, where are you coming from? I said, school. She said, OK, I got my underpants wet, so I didn't I didn't have any on. I was trying to change it and the minute I took off my pants, she busted back in the room and saw that I didn't have any on. And she was like, okay, just take your belt out. <laughs> she backed me in a corner and she beat the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, hey, man, I said this to say experiences like that, you know, it makes you, makes you change your way of thinking. And I was too scared of my mom to actually not turn out to be an upstanding member of society so growing up caribbean you you if you didn't you missed out on a lot because there are certain things that actually molded your life in a different way that only caribbean parents can actually do that for you 
Oh yeah. Growing up in the Caribbean with my mom, she is the type of person that will basically tell you, like, if you ask her if you can do something, she'll say, alright, okay, go ahead and do it. And when you do it, guess what? She quarreled about the same thing she just gave me permission to do. Um, my mom usually like, whenever I give trouble, she'll put me outside with, um, in Belize we have this thing that we call a scrub board, so usually what she does is give me my basket of clothes, put it outside, put me outside with a big top and my scrub board, so all I had to do was just sit down there whole days washing clothes, so yeah. And for me, I think almost all of us in the Caribbean have went, has, have passed through this because for me, I could just finish cleaning up the house, doing all kind of thing, you know. And the minute I come and lie down, and the minute I sit down and do something, guess what? My mother come. You don't do nothing in the house. You just sit down, sit down, and she go and she get on. That's my mom. My mom is the same way. Girl, you just get on, go and go and then that's uh, the minute you sit down, you become the laziest person. The 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 what it is, careless person. Um. You're so you just name it irresponsible everything they give you yeah. and you just finish the what you had to do you know, and then yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that i would share growing up caribbean like superstition that my parents would have like told me when like around the early times where i just saw a rainbow they would say hey you never to point at it or else it will cut your finger and that was like a saying or a belief back in the days in haiti what they would tell to kids and another one is do not run or walk with one foot of slippers or it means that you want your mother to die or your mother is going to die. That's scary. Thankfully, yo, it didn't come true, but I haven't worn one foot of slippers for a while as a sign. And I don't know if it is like a means of showing respect or something. I really don't know, but yeah. I was born in Kingston but partially grew in St. Mary. Now as a kid growing up I was kind of a tomboy but not like too tomboy. So like I get a bicycle right and you know when you're younger you get a bicycle yo yeah you're one of the bodies thing you know because yo you have a bicycle nobody can track you. So I get my bicycle now I'm gonna say alright we're gonna do a race because my, my bicycle now so me can go ride bicycle with all of the boys then. Is it? So no, you start the race and everybody ride them bicycle down the hill and yo, we say yo, you're not possible, me, I win. This, that, that, whatever. I was in the lead, because you know, on a dinner. But, anyways, so where I race the bicycle and it's when we reach like down the hill, dog. I realize, say yo, the brakes not work. And this is like while I'm going down the hill. So it's like, alright. My dad I try and make to say like yo what am I going to do? I look in front of me now for say like alright where could I probably crash? So then before I reach cross the before I reach cross the road I realized say yo there was an almond tree there's like this big almond tree right and you know it's like there's a tire it's either make the bicycle go in the road crash and dead more likely or go crash in the almond tree so I was like yo then you know say that you have to go do still you know you have to go Anyways, so I just like mess skid down the hill with the bicycle skid down the hill and then I just turn the bicycle and just like go straight up now the almond tree yo. I surprised I didn't even fly off of the bicycle and I don't know how that even happened but the bicycle just like tilt over with my dog and yeah but the laugh off of me and yeah that was it. <laughs> if you could change anything about the Car um, Caribbean parents or being grown up in the Caribbean mm -hmm. what would it be? These chores. <laughs> really? This choice, is like real. I don't think I would change anything about being a Car living in the Caribbean or being uh, really? in the Caribbean. Because I mean, to me, that's what makes us unique. You know, True. Caribbean people they're special, <laughs> especially the parents. Them, the parents they just have a special gift here, yeah, man. That's how I see it. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade being in the, living in the Caribbean for anything. Like, Caribbean <laughs> <to> my heart. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite childhood memories would be helping my grandmommy cook in the in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. She would either let me like put the seasoning on the meat or you know 
let me lick the spoon or whatever the case may be i had a really good childhood and also we had when i was growing up like 10 dogs so it was always important for us to feed the dogs so we would then turn cornmeal and give them with lasco and just make sure say all of the dog them never eat up the food and make the baby them stop <laughs> so um also one thing that my parents taught me growing up was that you should always incorporate god in everything so we used to go to church all the time every time um sunday with that church all day monday we rest tuesday nights of bible studies wednesday a prayer meeting thursday we rest friday would be either youth service or men's night or women's night saturday choir practice sunday all over again you see me so yeah but that taught me that god is the center of everything he is the one that gives us life and basically for us to you know incorporate him in everything that we do so yeah um growing up caribbean i've learned that there are many similarities that makes it caribbean like each country especially between jamaica haiti trinidad when i've lived there i've seen like similarities that would make it hey yo i'm in the caribbean there are different there are these things that would connected together however as much as they're close to similarities one of the things that makes it close is like their creole in terms of trinidad and, and jamaica um just certain words that they would say is similar however their accent is totally different the culture is quite different haiti and jamaica and trinidad's culture would be totally different which gives them their um individuality you know, to say that, hey, this is Haiti, this is Trinidad, this is Jamaica, you know? And that's one of the things why I love, I love, love, love growing up Caribbean. And uh, yeah, one more thing, one more thing. Banan cheese at Easter, soup jumu, January 1st, and sorrel at Christmas. Best things ever. The, the Easter is from Jamaica, um, the Easter one. And Soup Jumu is a Haiti tradition at first January 1st, their Independence Day, and sorrow at Christmas. I think that's not only in Trinidad, but when I discovered it, it was like Trinidad. And so, yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. My accent is very mixed, but don't, don't bother with it. Right? I love it. So I wanted to add my little two cents on growing up in the Caribbean. So for those of you who don't know, I grew up in like three different Caribbean countries. I grew up mostly in Jamaica though. And one thing I noticed living there is that nicknames was like a really big thing. Like to this day, there are people that I only know them by the nicknames they were given. I do not know their real name. <laughs> it's bad, I know, but that's what it is. Like that's how it is. And one thing I noticed with these nicknames, half the time it rarely had anything to do with their real name. Like there was no connection whatsoever. For example, I grew up knowing this lady as Aunt Trudy. And then I went to some event, I think it was either a wedding or a funeral, and found out that her real name was Tamara Smith. And I'm just like, where did Trudy come from to this day? I still don't know. But then I noticed for like guys, they mostly got their nicknames based on like a physical feature. So you would have names like Blackie, Bulgy if they had big eyes, Lippy if they had big lip, um, Blinky, like I know someone who was called Blinky because they blinked a lot. Tallman, those were names that most the guys would get. Then for girls, it would be like Candy, Trudy, Punchy, Poochy, um, Miss Chin or Chin. And that was mostly like for people who they had like, they were mixed with Chinese. So yeah, that's something I noticed a lot, but that's my little two cents about growing up in the Caribbean. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who sent a video. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. And for those of you who are watching it, if you liked it, hope you learned something. Hope you liked the video. Subscribe, share this video with your friends and family. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't forget to do road and do things. Watch out for more episodes. And until next time, Maggie is out.